Throughout this course, I'm going to talk about mathematical models. In full generality, a model is any application of a mathematical concept to an external situation. Since calculus is the study of functions and their behaviors, models in this course will be functions. Functions that are used to describe some connection between two quantities in the world. The branch of mathematics that deals with models is called applied mathematics. It is often good to think of a mathematical model, a function, as a hypothesis about how the world works. Based on some data, we can guess that a current function will describe a situation. I can look at the path of a thrown baseball and guess that the path should be a quadratic. I can study the growth of a population and guess that it might be described by an exponential function. After this guess, models are tested, refined, and used for prediction. I can do science with this model as a hypothesis and figure out if the model is a good model, if it fits the data, if it makes reasonable predictions, or if it is a poor model, diverges from the data, makes strange predictions. I can iterate, improving the model as part of a repeating scientific progress. Once I have chosen a function, I can analyze the model using all the tools of mathematics. This class is all about that analysis, but let me briefly describe a few things I might want to think about as examples. I can think about the domain. Even though a function might mathematically have a large domain, not all of that domain might be reasonable for the model. If the input to a function is a population, then the input must be positive. Negative population makes no sense. Also, there is probably a maximum possible input, putting an upper bound on the domain. These are restrictions to the, main, to the domain that come from the real world situation. I can also look at the starting values. Many models depend on time and have functions where time, usually the variable t, is the input. Usually these start at time equals zero, so the value t equals zero should be the starting value of the model. Many functions have constants in them, like the coefficients a, b, and c in a quadratic. I can wonder what those mean for the model. Do those numbers have some meaning? For those of you who have taken physics, you might know that the a in the quadratic represents an acceleration term for a model of projectiles. These numbers will usually carry some meaning, though figuring out that meaning is often difficult. A goal of this course is understanding functions. Therefore, a subsidiary goal is understanding models, and I hope by the end of the course, you'll have the conceptual understanding and technical tools to understand functions as models, to analyze them and criticize them. While I will talk about models throughout the course, I'll return to this in great detail right at the end, where I'll put together all the tools of the course to analyze models. They will give stories about the situations they represent, stories encoded in mathematical ideas and symbols, and hopefully you will be able to understand these stories. When you go into the world to try to apply a mathematical function to a situation, you have to choose that function. The world gives you some data, hopefully, but not the function. A major challenge in applied mathematics is choosing a function to match data. This process is called regression, finding the best function to fit a sense set of data. Regression is usually part of statistics, and I won't teach any of its techniques in this course. But as a concept, it is central to what we are doing. All the regression that I will do in this course will be naive, just looking at a data set and trying to guess the type of the function. I'll do three examples. Here is a function which measures the concentration of, of a certain chemical depending on time. I have nine data points that were measured. I need to decide which function works here. This looks like it is steadily increasing, so a reasonable guess is a linear function. And if I were to guess a line, I might draw this line through the data. It's not a perfect fit, of course, but it is probably a reasonable model for this concentration function. Here is a set of data of population depending on time. This population is clearly not linear like the last model. Instead, it is going up and down. I could try to guess a polynomial. Maybe a degree three or a degree four polynomial can have this shape. 
However, I'm going to guess a trig function. Maybe this population oscillates like a sine or a cosine function. I can draw such a function through these points and get what might be a reasonable model. Here's a third data set, measuring the height of a tree over time. This looks like it might be linear, but it looks to me like it slows down a bit over time, grows faster in the first year, and then slower. I would like a function that curves down a little. I, knew, I know two functions with that shape, a square root and a logarithm, and I'll try a square root function. I've drawn the graph of a square root function as best I can through this, these points, and it looks all right. Again, I won't teach the specific techniques of regression in this course, but hopefully the examples help explain the idea of a model, of choosing a function to describe data. This course is focused on the understanding of functions. I want good tools and techniques to try and understand how these functions are used as models. If I can understand what the function is doing, I can understand what story the model is trying to tell about the situation in the world.